Today on the Vince Everett Ellison Show, we are going to talk about how the Democratic Party is using public education to destroy America and why they hate school choice so much. Look, they're going to try to, you know, how big tech is, they're going to try to block me and censor me. So I want you people to like, share, and subscribe, and follow me on X so we can get the message out there, okay? So join me today on the Vince Everett Ellison Show. All right, let's get this thing started. The nerve of these Democrats, man, the nerve of these Democrats. So let me tell you what they're doing. For the past 60, 70 years, they've been using public education to destroy America. Now, what they want to do, they want, you know, we've used public education for years to Christianize our children, right? To teach them the ideals and the values of us, the mores and the values of their parents and of their community, but mostly their parents. It worked that way up until Brown versus Board of Education when they decided that they wanted to use public education to start pressing a government ideology. Now, let us start with this sage advice from Mr. Malcolm X. Malcolm said, only a fool, only a fool would allow his enemy to educate his children. Let me say that again. Only a fool, gun to your head, a fool will allow his enemy to educate his children. Pause for effect. Now, what did we do? After slavery, of course, yeah, that was segregation down south. That was meanness. That was low downness. Democrats hated black people for many different reasons. They thought we were inferior, da 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 da. The biggest trick they played was not them thinking they were inferior. The greatest, the worst thing they did does they made us believe it also. Yeah, they made us believe that we were inferior to them. We still compare ourselves to white America in all of these various ways. And it is a sick sick mindset that we have. But since we're doing it, let's play the game. Let's look at public education. There's this achievement gap that we talk about inside of Black America all the time between Black and white people. And the achievement gap is awesome. White children are much better educated than Black children. Math, sciences, reading, you name it. If you want to compare, let's compare. Now, Asian children and Jewish children uh, and children from India they are better educated than white children, but we don't compare ourselves to them. Now, we compare ourselves to white children for some reason. But that's where we are, so let's deal with it. So here's the problem. We've integrated, right? Well, here's something that's pretty interesting. According to the National Assessment of Educational Progress, the NAEP, a sector of the U.S. Department of Education, 84% of black students like proficiency in mathematics and 85% of black students like proficiency in reading skills. 85%. Now, just in case you guys didn't hear me correctly, let me read this to you again. According to the National Assessment of Educational Progress, the NA. EP, a sector of the U.S. Department of Education. This is the U.S. Department of Education. This ain't me saying this. This ain't some type of conspiracy theory. This is the federal government. It says 84% of black students like proficiency in mathematics and 85% of black students like proficiency in reading skills. That means they can't count and they can't read. Explain to me. How you are going to work in America if you cannot read? Explain to me how you're going to work in America if you cannot count. That means only 15% of our children are proficient in reading and counting. 15 out of 100. And we say it's time to get out of public education 
and teach and send our children to a private system so that the parents can make sure that the education fits the child and Democrats say no. Well, I know what you're going to say. I've heard it already. Oh, it's because the white folks get all the money and the black people don't get no money. If we had the same amount of money that the white folks have, our children would get the same education as the white children. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. Here's another fun fact. Average expenditures by race. Overall spending is remarkably similar for white and black students, despite large racial differences in ge geography and income. The average black student attends a district that spends $14,385 per student, while the average white student attends a district that spends $14,263 per student. Again, that's $14,385 for black students and $14,263 per white student. This is from the School District Expenditures and Race Economic Research, St. Louis Fed. You getting it now? Black students actually get more money than white students do, and our and 85% and of our children cannot read. Lord have mercy. Hmm. Nevertheless, they fight against school choice. Now, what happened? Well, after the Civil War, of course, we had segregation in the South. White students, on average, were getting three times more to be educated than black students. Our facilities and our pay were not as good as white students. So what did we do? I found out something that's very, very interesting. Have any of y'all ever heard of the Rosenwald schools? The Rosenwald schools were schools that were built between 1917 and 1932. They were established by the great Booker T. Washington and a Jewish gentleman by the name of Julius Rosenwald, who was over Sears and Roebuck. Between 1917 and 1932, they built over 5,000 schools down south and educated over 700,000 black students. That's right. A third of black students down south were, were, were educated at these Rosenwald schools. Black education in America, listen to me, because I know y'all have heard lies about this. Black education in America before Brown versus Board of Education, even though we got less money, maybe about two-thirds less, was as good as white education. Oh, you don't believe me? You gonna call me a lie? Well, let me read it to you. In my book, Iron Triangle, I talk about the myth of Brown versus Board of, Board of Education. And I'm going to read you what the Supreme Court said. Not what I said, what the Supreme Court said. So this is what was going on in Brown. The Supreme Court, well, the NAACP was suing the state of South Carolina and, and some schools in Topeka, Kansas, Kansas. They said that the concept of separate but equal was unequal. They proved that these white schools were not giving, were, were getting much more than the black schools because in um, uh, Plessy versus Ferguson, the Supreme Court had ruled that as long as the facilities were equal, they could remain separate. So y'all all heard the concept of separate but equal. So as long as they were equal, they could remain separate. Well, NAACP said they're not equal that these states are giving black students much less than they're giving white students. That was the case. And then NAACP said, well, we want to integrate. Well, the, the, these school systems knew that they were unequal. They knew they were giving black students less. So when they were called on the carpet, they said, ooh, we got to fix this, y'all, because we are not in compliance. And we got to do it quick before they come down with their decision in the Supreme Court. And so they then made all the facilities equal. 
over about a two or three year period of time, they bought black children school buses. They built the schools. They got them new school books. They made sure that teacher, teacher salary was also equal to white teacher salary. Don't believe me? Let me read it to you. Because in Brown versus Board, Board of Education, they talked about it. In the Brown opinion, it said, in the instant cases, the question is directly presented. Here, unlike Sweat versus Painter, which was another case where they proved that the facilities were unequal and that they had to make them equal. Here, unlike Sweat versus Painter, there are findings below that the Negro and white schools involved have been equalized or are being equalized with respect to, listen to this, with respect to buildings, curricula, qualifications, and salaries of teachers and other tangible factors in the Negro and white schools involved in each of the cases. They're being equalized. Oh, they're equal. In buildings, curricula, qualifications, and salaries of teachers and other tangible factors in Negro and white schools. So what did they say? Since they are equal in all other aspects, we must look instead to the effect of segregation itself on public education. So that lie y'all been hearing for the last 70 years, the white children wasn't getting what the black children, the black children wasn't getting what the white children were getting. We didn't have the buses. We didn't have the school. Uh, they were treating us like dogs. That's a lie. Supreme Court said it. They were equalized. In my hometown of Brownsville, Tennessee, my father was going to school during that time, and my mother was too. My mother went to West High School back in the 50s. West High School was built so well, all black schools still standing right now. I think they made it into a police department or something now, down in Madison County, Tennessee. My father's school, Carver High School, named after George Washington Carver, was built and was newer than the white school in Haywood County. They had buses that picked them up and took them to school. My dad will tell you about it. Yes, Carver High School is still standing right now. They've turned into a black, hist black history museum. Yes. Built so well in the 1950s, 70 years later, the school still stands. Oh, no. Black folks didn't want that. Uh-uh. These are the people that didn't believe that they was nobody unless they sat down and ate and used the bathroom and went to school beside white folks. It made them feel good, you know. So they took them to the Supreme Court, and this is what they said to the Supreme Court. Even though all that stuff is right, even though they are equalized, we want to integrate, not with good Christian white folks, who we could, you know, take an opportunity to integrate with. We want to integrate with the Ku Klux Klan. Hear me when I say this, y'all, because I know what y'all going to try to say. I know how y'all going to try to lie on me. Vince Ellison say that you're supposed to segregate children on account of race. That's a lie. Segregating people forcibly on account of race is not right. It is wrong. The Brown decision was correct. The decision that says that racism has no place in America is correct. The Brown opinion was incorrect, and let me tell you why. The reason that they said that they wanted to end segregation is a problem. Here's the reason. We come then to the question presented. Does segregation of children in public schools solely on the basis of race, even though the physical facilities and other tangible factors may be equal, they said it again, they may be equal, deprive the children of the minority group equal opportunities, they said, we believe it does. It continued to say, to separate them from others of similar age and qualifications solely because of their rates. Now, this is why they say they had to rule in favor of the NAACP. This is why. They say that to separate these black children, this is a quote, generates a feeling of inferiority 
as to their status in the community that may affect their hearts and minds in a way unlikely ever to be undone. Here's the statement. Segregation of white and colored children in public schools has a detrimental effect upon the colored children. It doesn't have a detrimental effect on the white children. It has a detrimental effect on the colored children to separate colored children from white children. And we celebrate that racist opinion. I am not the only one who feels that way. I know y'all saying, Vince tripping, Vince tripping, all right? Me and Ibram X. Kennedy don't agree on a whole lot of stuff. He wrote about how to be an anti-racist and da 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 da. But he wrote in his book, um, uh, he wrote in his book, uh, Stamped from the Beginning. He said, um, Earl Warren essentially offered a racist opinion in this landmark case. Separate black educational facilities were inherently unequal and inferior because black students were not exposed to white students. He said it was a racist statement and black people applauded it. So what happened to the Roswell, Roswell schools? Well, after Brown versus the Board of Education, they started tearing them all down. Schools that were educating black children all over the South, they decided to tear them down. Now, children should not be segregated on account of race. But they should be segregated on account of hate. They should be segregated on account of incompetence. They should be separate. They should be segregated on account of a person that says, I want to kill you. And that's what you had. You had public educational officials telling you that if you send your child to my school, I'm going to either kill him or I'm going to make sure he don't get a good education. They told us that, and we sent them anyway. Where if we had said we want a private system where we can decide where we go to school, all we would have done would have said, here's a school. This school is not segregated by race. We want good black people and good white people to come together, and we want the bad black people and bad white people to take you behind somewhere else. We don't want you nowhere near us. This is a Christian school that's going to teach Christian values. And we want you to come here and we're going to love one another. We're going to have forbearance to one another. We're going to teach one another. And we're going to have guns so that when the Ku Klux Klan or Black Lives Matter show up, we're going to deal with you. No race baiting, no drugs, no fighting, no hatred. Instead, we got the Supreme Court to say that we going to send black children to school with folks that did the Little Rock Nine thing, beating them children up, slapping them around, threatening them every day. Ruby Bridges went to school down in New Orleans. One little black girl. All the white children left out of school. And that child had to come to school a whole year by herself sitting in that school. And her mom and daddy sent her to that school and scarred that child for life. And everybody wants to applaud it now. But what good did it do? 85% of black children now can't read. 85% of them also can't do math. But the children before this time, my mother and my father in that generation before was given some of the best education in the world. HBCUs were educating black children and black scholars all over the world. Well, you want it to integrate, like I said, not with good white Christians and good black Christians. You want to integrate with George Wallace and the Ku Klux Klan. Why didn't you just say them the problem and just blow your own brains out? Because right now, the black community is in a dystopia. Now, why? Well, after Brown versus Board of Education, see, this is a trap. They use race to set us up. Because after Brown, they needed an enforcement mechanism to force this federal law upon America. Well, it was a, it was a federal judgment. So who had to get involved in education? Oh, you got it. 
It was the federal government. And just like the great Ronald Reagan said, the scariest sentence in American language is I'm from the federal government and I'm here to help. So what did the feds do? The Fed took this as an opportunity, man. Oh, boy, by 1962, they had run prayer out of school by England and by Tali. Oh, Lord, they had drugs in school, sex education in school, you name it. They was putting it all in the schools after that. And in one generation, we went from having the best educational system in the, in, in the world to in 1982, Ronald Reagan put out a report that said, a nation in crisis. The whole public education system had been torn asunder. The report said if a foreign nation had forced upon America the educational system that we have today, we would have considered it an act of war. Well, a foreign country did, a foreign entity did. It was called the Democrat Party. A bunch of perverts, liars, psychopaths, and anti-Christian bigots. They took God out of school, but the drag queens in. They took prayer, they took Bible out of school and put pornography in. They took virtue out of schools and put hip hop in. And now as our children walk around here killing one another, can't even live with them. Everybody's scared. Walk around looking like a bunch of fools fighting and raising hell all the time. Black Lives Matter, uh, 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 George Floyd, you name them. And they're trying to produce George Floyds all over the country. Everywhere you get a bunch of George Floyds, you know what you got? You got a bunch of Democrats. Everywhere you got poverty, hatred. Good God, man. You, you, can't, you can't even bring the Ten Commandments in school. What do you have against the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not commit adultery. I can see why you got a problem with that one with being, being a liberal. Thou shalt not covet. Yeah, well, you know, there it is. That's why you don't want the Ten Commandments. Because if people follow the Ten Commandments, they cannot be a Democrat. Why? Don't Democrats want to kill your babies? Democrats want to uh, put LGBTQ and transition your children? Oh, they want to turn your children into sex objects. They want to, they want to take them and groom them. Oh, yeah, man. And look, here's something else you better look out for. These pedophiles. Yeah. They kind of call them, they don't want to call them pedophiles. They call them maps now, minor attracted persons. They're coming. They are working to get the age of consent taken off the books of every state so they can come and rape your babies. And they're all in the Democratic Party. A bunch of baby rapists. You better watch them. They coming. Child pornography is all out there. I'm trying to wake y'all up to who these perverts are. Now, we got one shot of taking this back and one shot taking it back right now. It's tipping point. And it's school choice. School choice comes in vouchers. That means that whatever money goes to you, goes to your child, you know, that $14,000 I was talking about, that goes to you and you decide how that child is educated. Whether you homeschool that child, whether you send that child to a Christian school, whatever. You also can have tax credits. That means whatever money you you uh, uh, pay in taxes comes back to you, you can use that for education. You can use scholarships. That means people that give money in a scholarship fund can write it off on taxes. You can take that scholarship money, get your child an education. You can do it like you do a Pell Grant. Well, when 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 your child goes to college, you can get Pell Grants. There's a thousand ways to do it. Why don't they want it? Very simple. The teachers' union. The NEA and the ATF are some of the biggest unions in America. They give tens of millions of dollars a year to the Democrat Party. They give tens of millions of dollars a year, period, but 99% of it goes to the Democrat Party. And they tell the Democratic Party, we do not want competition. We want a monopoly. We want that body, that 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 fourteen thousand dollars. We want the body that follows that $14,000. We don't, and then they tell the Democratic Party, we don't want any standards when it comes to our teachers. We don't, if we educate them, fine. If we don't educate them, fine. You can't fire us. You can't do nothing. And the Democrats say, how much money are you going to give us? Well, all the money that they give the Democratic Party in contributions, there it is. Teachers get raises. They pay their dues. Dues 
go to the Democrat Party. Democrat Party uses it to stay elected. Classic money laundering, y'all. I talk about it well in my book, Crime Me. You need to get it. Your children are being used as bodies. That's it. Matter of fact, they don't want them educated. An educated man cannot be a slave. They are getting 90% of the black vote in places like Detroit, Memphis, Chicago, L.A., all these places. And as long as they're getting 90% of the black vote down there, do you think they're going to try to educate black people any better? So they won't get the black vote anymore? Parents, this is your decision. You have to decide. You have to say, I want my children to have a better life than me. This is always the American dream, to have your children live better than you. You got to love your children more than you hate the Republican Party or the conservatives. Because usually it's conservatives that are pushing school choice. You got to stop saying, well, I don't want school choice because... The white folks going to take this money and they're going to educate their children and I don't want them to educate their children. You're holding them down and you're holding yourself down more. You're going to say that I'm going to hurt myself because I don't want these people to get some money. Just stupid that is. I've proven to you that Brown versus Board of Education had nothing to do with the fact that our schools were raggedy. The fact that we didn't have the same thing that white children had. It's in Brown versus Board of Education if you want to read the opinion for yourself. It tells you they had become equalized. Why did they want it? They wanted to integrate. They wanted to set beside their former white masters because that made them feel good about themselves. Brown says it. Separating black children from white children made black children feel inferior. And this is really going to get you. They got this because um, Dr. Kenneth Clark, he used a, a doll test. And um, he would take a black and a white doll, put the doll in front of the children, and ask the children questions. So he'd ask a white child, which, ch which doll is the good doll? The, child, the white child said, white doll. Which doll is the smart doll? White child said, white doll. Well, they would do the same thing with black children. And the black children would say the white doll was the smartest, the white doll was the good doll, and the black doll was the bad doll, da 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 And they said, ooh, it's cause of segregation. Well, Oprah Winfrey did the same test in the 2000s, and the results were the same with the children. You know why? Because black people teach their children to be inferior. The Democratic Party teaches you to be inferior. Malcolm asked the question, who taught you to hate yourself? from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Who taught you? Black Democrats taught you that. They're the ones that scream no justice, no peace. Martin Luther King was the one that said, how can I pull myself up by my bootstraps when I'm bootless? Al Sharpton and them saying, get your foot off my, get your knee off my neck. No justice, no peace. We poor, we hungry. We can't make it. White supremacy. You've heard me say it before and I'll say it again. No one is superior to me. Why? Because I'm an heir of Jesus Christ. I'm a child of God. White supremacy is like voodoo. You have to believe it for it to have any effect on you. But they teach children systemic racism, white privilege. You've heard me say this also. There is a privilege to be white, but there's also a privilege to be black. It's a privilege to be Asian. It's a privilege to be Hispanic. It's a privilege to be Jewish. They have taught us through public education that we are an inferior people because we are still comparing ourselves to white America. We're still fighting to integrate as opposed to fixing ourselves. We are not supposed to change the other man. We're supposed to change ourselves. And I do not care how many of them love you if you don't learn to love yourself. It means nothing. 42 murders in Memphis already this year. All of them black on black. 1,200 carjackings. Murder, killing each other. Why? Because they've taught us to hate ourselves. What is the manifestation of it? 
we're always fighting to get away from each other and integrate with other people because we think that we are too inferior to be around. We hate each other too much to be around. This has to be rectified. And public education and the Black Democrats and the Democratic Party taught this to America. They taught white people in the Democratic Party, yeah, that they do have some type of privilege over us. Ain't that something? White folks walking around saying, yeah, I got privilege over you. I wish someone would tell me they had privilege over me. I have something to tell them. One did tell me that one time. He said, yeah, the black man could get ahead in America if the white man would get his foot off his neck. I looked at the dude and said, look at me and you. Look at me and look at you. You think you put your foot on my neck? We seek pity, not respect. Envy, not admiration. We seek weakness, not power. The only way to fix this, people, is to go back to our Bible, to go back to the teachings of Jesus Christ, where he says you're more than a conqueror, where he says I'm your father and you cannot be inferior to anyone, where he tells you that the, that the fear of God is the beginning of all knowledge, yet they put you in an educational system that tells you that if you even speak his name, they'll put you out. Can a man serve two masters? Can you go to a public educational system that you fund that tells you that you cannot speak God's name and think that you are serving God? No, you have bowed to another master. And that's why your streets are left until you desolate. So an election is coming up. And you're going to have some of the politicians that are going to say, we support school choice. If you vote for us, we'll give it to you. You're going to have others that say, no, we believe in public education. And if you take money out of the public system, it's going to make the public system worse. You're supposed to say Make it worse. 85% of the children can't read and 85% can't do math already. Make it worse. You are in control of your own destiny. So if you choose these people, if you've chosen them, you've chosen them. Nobody else has done this to you. You're making a choice right now and it's going to be all on you. Now, I want you to go to my website, VinceEllison.com. I want you to look at some of the things I have on that website. You're going to love it. Number one, I want you to look at this great documentary of mine, Will You Go to Hell for Me? It asks the question, can you vote for a decrepit, perverted, diseased Democrat party that's anti-God and anti-Christian and think that you're going to Go to heaven? I say not. This DVD proves it. You're going to see the Iron Triangle, the book that started it all. I say that most black preachers, most black politicians, most black civil rights workers are the enemy of black America, not white conservatives. This book will prove it. It was voted number 61 on the list of the greatest political books ever written in the history of the world. Yeah, Iron Triangle. You're going to see 25 lies. Awesome book. It talks about the 20 Democrats party, most 25 most damnable, destructive, and seductive lies and how to refute them. This book was number one. All my books have been number one. All of them remain number one throughout the year at certain times. Get 25 lies. And then the last one that just came out this last October called Crime Inc. It says the Democrat Party is a criminal enterprise. It runs itself, it runs a party like the mafia. It seeks to destroy, never to build up. Go to my website, VinceEllison.com, y'all. Buy these books. Buy the DVD. They'll change your life. They'll rock your world. I am here to wake you up. I'm here to shake you and let you see that you have the power to better your circumstances. Change your ways. Children, return back to God again. As I've said before, he says, let the heaven bear witness that I lay before you blessings and curses, life and death. Choose life so you and your children shall live. Thank you for joining me today and join me next week on the Vince Everett Ellison Show.